Hey everyone, welcome aboard this uh, radio channel and as I was saying a couple of weeks back we will revisit some of the receivers and uh, kind of do a second review, you know, after um, years of use how did they, you know, hold on to chime? How did they hold on to my, uh, I have to admit, rather rough way of, you know, manipulating my radios and handling them and, and you know, um, they, they, they get pretty much uh, beaten and battered while I go to Perry Island and so how do they fare after so many years. So this is a Texan PL680. Um, so I purchased this three years ago. I've been using it a lot. You've seen it in many videos and many videos of Perry Island where it's one of my receiver of choice. And um, of course I've had some issues with this radio. So um, first of all let's just go through what this radio is. So basically this is a uh, AM, FM, shortwave receiver with long wave, FM stereo through the earpiece, of course. And it is around 120, 120, 120 US dollars on the websites that I see. It's still available on eBay. Uh, I've seen it on Amazon also. So uh, what do I think of that receiver after three years? Okay. So first of all, this, of course, is a great receiver. It has direct entry keypad. It is very sensitive um, with a little something that we'll talk about. Of course, it has timer, has the memory functionalities. Uh, tuning, of course, on the right side has um, a BFO, so you can listen to single sideband signals. It has, of course, uh, the famous um, synchronous detection, which I must say is one of the best I've ever used. And of course, runs on four AA batteries. Um, has on the left side a antenna connector. It has the DX local switch for uh, when you are using long wire. It has, of course, a treble bass tone. It has headset. You have power adapter that uh, comes with the radio, I believe, if I remember well. On the right side, you've got your tuning. You've got your BFO here to uh, fine tune on single sideband. And of course, you've got here the volume control on the bottom. Telescoping antenna on the top, and uh, nothing much on the bottom except this little thing here that a lot of people don't know that this is a little stand so you can actually put it upright and it won't fall down even if you kind of, you know, move it a little bit. So uh, you can, of course, get this out or on. Um, then it has a reset on the bottom if you need to reset the receiver. Four AA batteries and uh, pretty long uh, range of, uh, of of you know battery uh, life if you uh, use it. I use rechargeables, but um, it's it's still pretty good on battery life. It is a good FM receiver. So on FM, you know, and I, I always test my FM receiving. Uh, using basically my beacon, uh, which is the uh, VPR station. To congratulate his troops uh, on having routed international terrorists, uh, they were his words, uh, and to announce that. Well, I don't even have the antenna extended, as you see. The contingent would be withdrawn, and I think Moscow. So this is VPR station. It's more than a um, hundred miles from Montreal, which is pretty good. Um, so it's a good FM, not the best, it's not a DX machine on FM, but it's a good FM radio. Uh, it withstands quite well the strong FM signals from here. So on FM works great, you have stereo through the earphones that are included. The ones included are rather crappy, I have to say. You're better off with using uh, better uh, earphones, or better yet, I use the phones that I actually I got with my phone here. And they have actually good sound quality and make this really shine with good sound quality. Medium wave AM, also not bad. I mean, it's a, a good AM radio. It's, um, of course, selectable 9 or 10 kilohertz depending on uh, the market that you actually want to choose it. So you can choose North America. It has the AM expanded band. So here. So lots of interference here, obviously, but this is the medium wave station. 
uh, CFRA in Ottawa, so it comes in quite well on 580 kilohertz. Good on medium wave, uh, good at night, you know, receiving faraway stations. You will not have any problems with that. Once again, a lot of people will tell you not a DX machine for medium wave, but overall, good performance. Short wave bands is actually very nice. It's a very sensitive receiver. Um, you can easily listen to a lot of stations. It has full coverage, so this is a general coverage receiver. It goes up to 29999. So it's a full, full coverage of the short wave bands, which is very nice. Um, to make it easier to listen to signals, it has sync detection, which is amazing. Sync detection is basically it removes a carrier that the station is sending and it replaces the carrier with its own uh, internal um, oscillator, its own internal little signal to kind of reduce the fading that shortwave signals have and often it helps in bringing in stations. <coughs> it keeps its lock really well even on weak stations and that is a good because a lot of uh, radios have difficulty when stations get a little weaker to keep the lock. So it's a great great uh, feature and it of course want to Remind everybody when you use sync detection, you will see that it says, um, you know, um, upper and lower sideband on the sync detection. Uh, it's not a single sideband mode. It is an, it's to be used on AM signals and to make them better, not on single sideband signals. Of course, there's a single sideband, which is nice because it has separate upper and lower sideband. This always helps in tuning in signals, makes it easier to tune amateur signals and utility signals of all sorts. So that's a very nice add-on and uh, it's just a great, great receiver overall for that. Two things that I don't like on the reception. <coughs> so when you receive a signal on shortwave, if you're in AM mode, um, it works great, volume is good, except when the signal fades to a very low, um, you know, and the fading, suppose it goes quite quite down in the noise. What's interesting is that this receiver doesn't have a smooth curve. So basically, you know, you would go down slowly and you'd see that the signal would be disappearing. This one is more like it's going down, it's going down, it's going down, then it's gone. It, at, at some point it has a break-off point where it's just gone. It doesn't have that little gradient left, you know, it doesn't have that little scale left. It just disappears as if at a certain threshold, the receiver's uh, input just can't receive the signal anymore and just drops, it drops to zero. So it's a weird thing because on some weaker signals, it happens sometimes that it could be a nuisance. Overall, it you know, you gotta really be on weak signals. Overall, it, it's a great shortwave radio. The second thing that I would say is, uh, unfortunately on single sideband, the volume is a little low and that is annoying. If you're inside and you're in your, your home, it might not be too bad if it's quiet. But you bring this outside, so for example, a great example for me is going to Perry Island. Well, outside it's a little noisier. And on weak single sideband signals, well, there's just not enough volume to really bring it strong enough to listen to what's happening. So that is a flaw. Two things that happened over the years, okay? When I bought this receiver, it was dead on frequency. And about six months later, um, when I started using it, I noticed it was at one and a half kilohertz. I, I okay, I, I did not measure it. The, the offset, the off kilohertz that I'm talking you about here is from my ear. You know, when you listen to a signal, we get to a point where we actually can by ear pretty much know we're tuned on the frequency. And so by ear, it kind of tells me it's about a kilohertz and a half off. But only in AM mode. When you're on single sideband, it's actually dead on. So it's kind of weird. So it, it really, really is bizarre. It's not, it's as if it's not really the radio that's off. It's like only in AM mode, it's off. It's so bizarre. Another thing that happened here is now I've got a wobbly little uh, control here because the encoder jammed really hard. Now, I kind of suspect that maybe it happens on really hot days or something because frankly it happened, it was a hot day, 
the radio was in the sunshine, so it, the, the front was burning hot, and it jammed as if maybe heat is actually making some kind of reaction with the compound or the um, lubricant that they use in the encoder. So thanks to Fastload, um, he opened it, he checked it out. Um, the problem was, you know, can you find an encoder to replace it? We didn't have one. So he kind of cleaned it up and put some um, mach sewing machine, a drop of sewing machine oil. It's a little stiff, but it works. Uh, so that's something that you might expect that could happen, basically, on this radio. Uh, so these are the problems that I've encountered over the years. But, you know, still, I like this radio enough that if I would have to buy a new one, I would probably not hesitate to buy a new one. But for somebody that's saying, hey, I want to have a Texan receiver, because of the issues I've had with this one, I might... might kind of tell you, well, maybe go to the PL660, I see less problems on that one, or the PL880, but the 880 is more expensive, so it's kind of a different, um, you know, type of radio, but uh, still, I, you know, a lot of people have the PL680, and a lot of you out there have the CX80 for a while, never had issues, so it could be quality control at some point, some radios are great, some radios just are maybe not as good. But I still love this radio and I still use it a lot because I really, really frankly love this radio even with what happened. So it tells you how it actually is kind of a good radio anyways. Uh, you can tune of course in 1 kilohertz or 5 kilohertz increments. Uh, you've got a signal strength meter which is a little generous. Um, I would say that this signal strength meter is very generous. You know, it will give you 5 bars on signals that would maybe need 3 three and a half uh, but still you know it's nice to have that little feature battery indicator of course you have the clock display this time at the same time as the frequency this is a great great plus because when you tune around single signals on the shortwave bands it's fun to know what UTC time it is if you want to know what you're listening to having the clock display at the same time has the frequency has always been for me one of the features I love on a radio and of course you can display UTC for local time has two clocks so it's just a great radio uh, with, of course, I've had a few flaws and that's what I'm telling you here, but I still love the Texan PL680. So that's kind of my uh, second look at the Texan PL680, uh, but I still love it and I still use it regularly as a uh, my main shortwave radio, um, portable radio, can tell you that. And uh, finally, of course, it's a PLL synthesized receiver, so that it's, you know, really, really stable. There's no drift or anything when you're listening to a single sideband signal, so not to worry about that. Sensitive enough to receive quite a lot of signals with the telescopic. And, um, of course, um, you know, on a long wire, um, you know, at Perry Island, it handles well a long wire. Uh, here I've noticed when I put my sloper in the backyard, which is longer than the typical long wire I'll put in uh, at Perry Island, uh, might be showing some signs of overloading sometimes a little bit. Uh, so it's not one of those things that you'll put 100 feet of wire on it, but you might put, you know, 10 or 20 feet and it actually will improve over the telescopic uh, enough and not overload. So there's kind of a you know, maximum length that you won't go over if you don't want to basically overload the radio. But it's still a, a good performer. So around 100 to 120 25 dollars US for uh, those that want it. And it's still available new on eBay uh, and on, I believe on Amazon I've seen it also. So I hope you enjoy my second look at uh, the Texan PL680. If you enjoy my, my videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up. And thank you so much for following us on this channel.